In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at an alternate way that we can create halftones in Inkscape. In previous videos, we've looked at how you can create halftones using tiled clones. In this video, I'm going to take a look at how we can produce halftones using patterns and filters. So before we start, if you'd like your command bar to be at the top like I have mine, and it's currently down the right hand side, you can come up to view down to the bottom and you've got this wide screen. If you just uncheck the box, that'll move your command bar up to the top, same as it is on my screen. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, create a rectangle to build our image in. So if we come over to the rectangle tool, we can come over and we can just drag out a rectangle uh, on our page. I need to now fill this with a pattern. So to do that, I need to open up my fill and stroke dialog box. Uh, so we've come up to the top, We've got this button with a paintbrush. Click on that and that'll open up our fill and stroke dialog box. So all I'm going to do is drag this over a bit to make it a little bit bigger. In here we can see we've got a few different options. We've got solid color, linear gradient, a radial gradient, meshes, and this one is patterns. So if we click on pattern, we can apply patterns to our rectangle. So in here we've got a few pre-made patterns. You can make your own patterns, which I might cover in a later video, but for now we're just going to stick with the ready-made ones. So I'm just going to scroll down till I find one that I like the look of. I think this one will do us. So we've applied this striped pattern to our rectangle. Let me get my selection tool. So when we've applied a pattern to a shape, we have controls in our dialog box that allow us to control how it looks. We can also edit on canvas. So if we click edit on canvas, we get some controls turn up in the center here. If we get hold of this top left square, we can drag our controls above so we can see them a little bit clearer. And with these, we can adjust how our pattern looks. We use the circular handle. We can just rotate it to rotate our pattern. So now we've created our rectangle with our striped pattern. We need to build a filter. To do this, we need to come up to filters at the top, click on that, and then we need to come down to filter editor. Over on the right hand side now, we have our filter editor open. We're gonna build a filter. So first thing we need to do is click on the plus button to create new filter. In here, we can change the name. We come down, click on the name. We can just change this to half tone. Click off. Now we can start building our filter. So to do this, we need to add several effects. So in the add effect box, we can come to the arrow at the end, click on the drop down menu. And the first one we want to do is add our image. So if we come down to the bottom, we have image. Click on this and that adds the image effect to our filter. But we need that image, so we need a source image. So if we come over to the folder under source of image, click on this, and then you can just work your way through your folders till you found the image that you've, you've saved. I've saved this image, ready to go. So I'm just gonna open that up. That's applied the image. We haven't got the filter turned on at the moment. So if we come up to the top, click on the filter box and turn the filter on, we can now see that our image is starting to be built up. So we're starting with the image. The handles around the outside are our rectangle underneath. So what we can do is just adjust the size of the rectangle till it fits the photo a little bit better, like so. Now we need to add our next effect. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna to go to add effect, and this time we wanna add color matrix. We click on color matrix. And in this one, we need to adjust the type or change the type. So we've got matrix, we wanna click on the arrow and we wanna change this um, to luminance to alpha. And this creates a negative from our photo. I'm just gonna come up here, I'm just gonna drag this down a bit so we can see a bit more because at the moment we're starting to cover up all our added effects. So we wanna flip this back around the right way. So to do that, we're gonna use another color matrix. So if we come up to the top, we're gonna to come down to color matrix. And this time we're gonna leave the type of matrix and we're just gonna adjust a couple of the values. So it's these bottom two values down here that we're gonna change. This one, we just need to make minus one. And the one in the corner, we just want to be one. And that'll flip our image back around the right way. Now this image is no longer um, solid color. If we get a rectangle tool, just drag out a rectangle and drop it to the bottom. And if we move it over, we can see that now our image is translucent. White areas are completely transparent while the black is more opaque. So we'll delete that. 
So the next thing we want to do is combine our image with the pattern below. So we're going to add another effect. And to do this, we're going to use composite. So if we come down to composite, we can click on composite. And in here, we've got two arrows. So this is combining um, two elements together. The first one, we want to be coming from the color matrix above. And the bottom arrow, if you click on the arrowhead itself, click and drag. You can drag this over to the source graphic and take the information from the source graphic. So down at the bottom, we've got operator. Currently on over, we need to change this to in. The next thing we need to add is a little bit of Gaussian blur. This just help uh, when we trace our image to create our halftone. So if we come up to add effect, we can come down, click on the drop down arrow. And in here, we want Gaussian blur. Now this, we want only a very small amount. On the image I'm working on, that's probably too much. So I'm going to change that down to, we go 0 0.4. Hopefully that would be better. So yeah, that's a little bit better. So I want to leave it like that for the time being. We can always come back and change, change all these things and adjust them until we've got an image that we like. So we're going to add another effect. This time we're going to start adjusting our image, uh, bring out the colors and create the appearance of a halftone. So to do this, we're going to come up to add filters. And this time we want to be using component transfer. So we click on that. Down at the bottom, we want to change the alpha channel to gamma. And this gives us some controls. So these, there's no really set rule to what you want to do with these. You just want to adjust these to get the image how you want it. So this is just a bit of trial and error. Different images are going to react differently. Oh, too much. So I think I need to change my pattern a little bit. So to do that, we can click on the rectangle. I can go to my fill and stroke, edit on canvas. We can get our controls back. We bring that down a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a touch because I am a long way out. So to zoom in, I'm just holding down control and using my mouse wheel. So I think a little bit more, somewhere around about there. We can go back to our filter editor and we can continue adjusting these until we get a better image. So you can see that as we adjust it, we're starting to get the appearance of halftones. Well, at the moment, it isn't a halftone. It's just that we're affecting the image. So it looks similar to a halftone. What we're going to do is then trace it with trace bitmap and that will convert it into our proper halftone. So if you want to um, amplify or intensify the effect that you're getting. You come up, you can right click on the component transfer and you can just duplicate. And what this does is reapply a new component transfer, which just kind of amplifies the effects. So then you can just fiddle with the controls for both of them until you get something that you like. So I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to stick there. So as we can see, this is this is looking quite a lot like a half tone. It's not actually a half tone at the moment. We're going to convert it to a half tone. So the first thing I need to do is convert this into a bitmap image so we can trace it with trace bitmap. With it selected, if we come up to edit, we can come down and click on make bitmap copy. And this will make a bitmap copy of our image. What it will do, though, is use the default resolution which isn't particularly high. It's only at 96 DPI. So we're going to change it just to make sure we get a decent quality image. So first thing we're going to do before we go up there, we're going to come up to the top. We're going to click on this button at the top here, a little spanner and a screwdriver to get our preferences. And in preferences, we want to come down to imported images. In imported images, we want to go down to create and resolution for create bitmap copy. So if we change this to 300, which is print quality, uh, we can click out of that. We know we're going to get a decent quality image now. So we can come up to the top. We can click on edit, making sure our image is selected. And we can come down to make bitmap copy. So I'm going to scroll out so we can see what's going on. So sorry. I'll get my selection tool. We can drag our bitmap copy off to the side. And if we move this about, we can still see that it's transparent. So it's only the darker elements that are opaque. If we move this off to the side. So we've got a little bit more space to work with. What I want to do now is trace this. So to trace it, we're going to use trace bitmap. 
if we come up to path we can come down to trace bitmap and that'll open up our trace bitmap dialog box so in the dialog box we're going to be using single scan the detection mode that we want to use is brightness cutoff and we're going to adjust the threshold to get our desired image so if you drag this over you can make the image a little bit bigger so because our image has varying opacity giving this multi-tonal um, effect by adjusting our threshold we can say how much or how little of our image we want to be included in our final tracing what we want to do just adjust this until we're happy with our image i think that looks quite good so now i'm happy with the image i'm going to press apply and we'll have a trace sat on top of our image so what i did if we move this on now out of the way i'm going to bring our half tone over what i've done with the image that's on the thumbnail and that i showed at the beginning i've just added some block color and some highlights um, behind our half tone so i'm going to do that now so first thing i'm doing is just organizing my images i've put the original picture at the bottom and i've got my half tone above now i'm using a combination of the bezier pen tool and the pencil tool pencil tool for speed uh, the bezier pen tool um, you can make more accurate curves it doesn't matter if i mess up with either because i can always adjust it with the nodes tool if you'd like to learn more about how to use the nodes tool and the bezier pen tool in combination then watch the video i've linked above it should pop up in the top right hand corner and it should show you everything you need to know so i've moved on to the lips now sometimes i'm working on the top image sometimes i'm working on the bottom um, just drawing out my shapes when i've completed them i can move them into position i can drop them down below the half tone adjust them with the nodes tool i then just adjust the color slightly and then move on to the eyes the eyes i just sketch around with a pencil tool um, adjust it with the nodes tool and we can move them into position drop them down behind the half tone now i've got all the background colors in place what i'm doing here is just adding some areas of white for highlights so i'm just quickly drawing them in with a with the pencil tool at the moment and i'm going to go through each one and using a combination of blur and opacity i'm just going to adjust them so they just look like reflected highlights on the skin and that will give our image a little bit more of a 3d appearance so we can just go backwards and forwards soften them up until we're happy with them so now i've completed my image and got it looking how i want it i want to remove some of this this mess around the edge so the way I'm going to do that is just clip out the image. So I've tidied everything up uh, over in my layers and objects dialog box. I've renamed everything. I've put them into groups and I've grouped all of them together under art. So I'm going to drag out a rectangle to create a clipping mask. So I'm just going to drag this over everything I want to include. I've got my opacity of the rectangle slightly reduced so I can see what's underneath. I can just adjust it until I'm happy with what's going to be included in the image. So now I'm happy with my clipping mask. I can come up to object, down to clip and over to set clip to trim away all the edges to leave us with our image as we want it. So in this video, I used a straight lined pattern. Of course, you can use any of the patterns that are available and whatever takes your fancy. So. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time around.